Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on March 1st, the first day of Women's History Month. On behalf of Governor Cuomo and myself, we welcome you and let the celebrations begin. Uh, today we have an important announcement related to women's history, uh, but first let's talk about why we're here. Uh, New York, of all the states, in my judgment, and I'm a bit biased, has the most uh, genuine, the most sincere, the deepest history with respect to women trailblazers who really changed the course of history in our nation. Uh, we're going to hear from some of our leaders today. Um, Nancy Zimfer, who is actually, are you the first female yeah. leader of SUNY? Okay, we got a first right here. Here's a trailblazer, ladies and gentlemen. I have one standing right next to me. How about this? And let me see, do we have any other firsts among us here? Let's see if we've got the first Democratic leader with us here today, Andrea yeah, okay. Stewart Cousins. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, Assemblymember Donna Lepardo, who is the chair of the Women's Legislative Caucus. Uh, first one, our first one to represent your area. And we actually have one of the upstate mayors, just to show you how enlightened uh, upstate New York is. Three of the five mayors in upstate New York happen to be women. And uh, we have one of them here, our host today, our mayor of Albany, Kathy Sheehan. So thank you for joining us as well. Uh, I think Betty's, Betty Little's here as well. There's uh, Betty, Dee Dee Barrett's here, assembly member. Uh, the Women's Caucus Executive Director, Shirley Tranholm, is here. We also have a large number of individuals who are representatives of the governor's administration uh, to show you how he has reached out to women uh, to increase the diversity of his administration. Rose Rodriguez, the state's diversity officer, our chief diversity officer, is here. Our OGS commissioner, Roanne Destito. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Roanne, okay. First, 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 first. <laughs> if you're a first, you got to tell me, okay? First okay. Woman, All right, we're good. OGS First woman OGS commissioner, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for Roanne. Uh, Audrey Zibelman, Zibelman uh, chair of the Public Service Commission. Audrey, are you a first? No. Oh, well, well, that's actually that's a good sign. Better. You know what? We don't want to have somebody first. We'd like to be. I'm not the first lieutenant governor. I think that's a good thing to be a yeah. lieutenant yeah. governor. Uh, Acting Commissioner Carrie Delaney, the Office of People with Developmental Disabilities, is here. And of course, our Executive Deputy Commissioner from the DMV, Terry Egan, is here. So uh, that's the current individuals we have represented here today. But just a quick look, word, a backward glance to see where we've come from. As you know, New York State was the site of the first Women's Rights Convention in 1848. Uh, we put this conversation into the national dialogue. We are standing on the shoulders of incredible giants. Uh, Susan B. Anthony, whose uh, story is told frequently in Rochester, where her home is. Harriet Tubman, uh, we're on the verge of making her burial place and the home she lived in her last 50 years here in Auburn, New York, a national park. And what a great story she has. Uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, I was just at the 200th anniversary of her birth celebration in New York City not long ago. And Frances Perkins, who was a champion of workers' rights under the Roosevelt administration. As we all know, they led the fight to end slavery, to give women the right to vote, the civil rights movement, and organized labor. They charted new courses, and they broke ceilings in the course of that journey. Um, we also are very proud of our current accomplishments. New York State, and I don't know if you know, it's kind of a trivia question. What state do all three of the women who are members of the U.S. Supreme Court come from? New York. All right, all right, okay. Did you all know that? All right, I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, and also the leader of our highest court recently, we were at her swearing in, Janet Di Fiore, uh, our chancellor, as I mentioned, and the mayors, and uh, two out of the five New York City borough presidents are women. Women currently make up about 25% of the legislature. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. that's all right, all right. Now that's up from 22. Uh, <laughs> seems like we got a little way to go. We're heading in the right direction, but we got a little ground to make up for. But that's actually higher than the national average, which is 22%. We're making uh, ground, uh, making some headway there. But the good news is we have a governor who gets it. Uh, when you look at the agenda that Governor Cuomo has put forward, over the last few years, uh, it's very oriented toward elevating women. His fight to, for the women's equality agenda, uh, d addressing human trafficking, pay equity, domestic violence issues, all of you were leaders on this and we want to commend you and thank you for uh, what you've done and your advocacy. The 30% MWBE goal, that is the highest in the nation. And that is substantial because uh, when the governor was first elected, it was 20%. He said, that's good, it's pretty darn good, but let's get it even higher, let's get to 30%. So that is the highest minority women-owned business contracting goal in the nation. 
Um, just last year, we became the nation's leader on fighting sexual assault on college campuses again. Uh, Chancellor Zimfer, I want to thank you again for your leadership, your willingness to take the story out to the SUNY campuses and create a model for the rest of the state. So we've been out there, and that impact is definitely being felt. Let's look where we are this year. The governor's fight to increase the minimum wage to $15 is going to have a bigger impact on women than anyone else because women are the majority of people earning the minimum wage in the state of New York. So he is fighting for women's dignity to be able to uh, elevate themselves and their families out of poverty, as well as paid family leave. And as the mother of two children, uh, who was working for government at the time, I know it was like to have to leave to spend a few months with a baby at home and how we had a struggle as a family to try and make ends meet during that time. And so why not say that we cherish the time of our families the ability for men and women to be able to spend time in the early months with their children or to take care of a spouse who's sick or an elderly parent. Why not give them the ability to have job security when they come back from that important leave? So these are some of the go governor's priorities right now. We're optimistic about getting them through the legislature this year with the support of the people surrounding me. Um, so that's where we're at today. I also want to commend the leaders of the legislature and the governor for putting forward a commission to commemorate what we're so excited about as we enter into the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote in the state of New York. Again, we are ahead of our time as we have been for a century. And as we head into 2017, which is the 100th anniversary, the governor has a commission and he's announcing today that he's appointing me to be a member of his commission. So that's the news. The commission's going to get kicked off. We're going to get it going. And we'll be taking the message all across the state for the next three years, celebrating the accomplishments of women through our history, but also hopefully inspiring the next generation of young women who want to achieve accomplishments themselves. And I want to thank everyone involved in that. So we have a governor who gets it. And at this point, I also want to say we have a wonderful proclamation right here, which I'm going to spare you all to read, but it looks really nice. It's nice and great uh, for the governor commemorating Women's History Month. And I'll leave you with one more thing. Every one of you needs to take a minute and go visit a new exhibit, which is going to be unveiled right now. And I want to mention Betty Little. You were involved in this issue as well, the commission. So thank you for your leadership uh, spearheading that through. Um, we invite all of you to visit a new display that will be unveiled later this afternoon. It's called Women Attorney Trailblazers, and that's going to be open for the month of March. It features the work of 10 New York attorneys who paved the way, and this is organized by the New York State Bar Association, so uh, we want to make sure you stop by and see that as well. So uh, it's a lot to digest. We're very excited about this month. We're going to be at events all through the month of March celebrating, and at this time, I'd like to turn it over to, as I mentioned, one of our great trailblazers, uh, my friend, SUNY Chancellor Nancy Zimper. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I particularly want to thank our Lieutenant Governor. Kathy Hochul represents us across the state. The highest ranking female elected officer in this state uh, makes her really, really special. Uh, and I have a round of applause for you. She's so supportive of our work in education, and we know that education is the real opportunity for women and men across the state and across the country. So. Uh, I want to thank you and the first that are standing behind me uh, because really, Senator, the first, I, I think it's terrific and carrying on even though what, the fourth, fourth. but very, very important. And I think, uh, Assemblywoman Lopardo, you were the first woman to represent Broome County. So we got another first there. And this is the first female mayor of Albany, and Albany is the oldest chartered city in the state, so second in the country, so the beat goes on. We waited a long time. Yeah, I tell you. So uh, I do thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for talking about the partnership we've had with Governor Cuomo and the work we are doing in New York. Our history is so profound, it makes it really important that we speak out during this Women's History Month. Um, I will say that in higher education as well, about the same percentage as the women in the New York legislature, about 23% of the people who lead universities uh, are women. That number, that percentage declines as you raise to the research and doctoral institutions, so we have a lot of work to do there. Uh, 21 
Of the 500, Fortune 500 companies are led by women. I'd say we have a lot of work to do there. Uh, I know the struggle to get women appointed to our corporate boards in this country. Uh, in European countries, they have a quota of 30% of every board must be women. Uh, we're at 18%, so we have a little work to do there. But I think the critical issue, and it hasn't changed in a long time, and this is from Catalyst, which is an organization that tracks women and their success in this country, to reach equity in the number of women running for elected office against the men in elected office at this pace, and I want to underscore that, if we don't speed the pace, we will reach equity in a mere 100 years. So we have to get on it, and we have to get on it now. Everybody behind me, you heard that. Now, I, I want to know, tell you that I also stand on the shoulders of uh, many significant women at the State University of New York. Uh, Cortland's Ann Dunwoody was the first woman in U.S. military history to be promoted to the rank of four-star general. How about that? You all know Renee Fleming, the marvelous opera singer from SUNY Potsdam, recipient of the National Medal of the Arts. There is a researcher at Stony Brook named Esther Takeuchi, who has the title of the American woman possessing the most patents in this country. And Sherry Mason, who has done research in the Great Lakes that kept, and this is very important, microbeads from our cosmetics. Mm. Now, just say thank you on that. <laughs> so uh, before I introduce this senator, I thought I would tell one little story. It does turn out that in my however many administrative appointments, I was the first dean of a college of education at Ohio State. I was the first chancellor of the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. I was the first president of the University of Cincinnati. And yes, the first chancellor of the State University of New York. So when I go to speak, just like the lieutenant governor and all the rest of you, you get this introduction. And now the first woman of the blah, blah, blah. That day at the Rotary in Cincinnati, I had a student shadowing me. I had to take him to Rotary. We had to feed him when we got to Rotary. You know, he was unprepared for the day. But he was with me for that whole day. And when we were riding back to the university in the car, and I had been introduced as the first woman, blah, 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 he said, and this just totally threw me, don't you get tired of being introduced as the first woman? I, I had to pause. I usually have an answer for everything, true or false. I had to think about it, and I said back to him, you know, when it doesn't need to be said anymore, it won't be. We live for that day, right? So now, first woman, Democratic legislative leader, Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. I want to thank uh, our Lieutenant Governor who makes us proud every day. Uh, not only you're a woman, but you're, you're a woman who is just, you know, such, such, such high quality intellect. You are a great role model, so I want to thank you, yeah, thank you Lieutenant Governor. And my good friend Nancy Zimper, who, again, you know, we talk about women in high places, but to have such great women in New York State who are leading, you know, the educational institution, we know that's the great equalizer, uh, really makes a difference what you bring to the table every day. So I want to thank you, thank you. Nancy, thank you. for all that you do. You. And all of my colleagues here, I know Betty Little, who, uh, you know, was kind of a mentor to me when I first came into the legislature. We share this love of local government, so I want to thank you, Betty. And I see my colleagues, I know Donna will, will also introduce uh, the assembly colleagues. But I think when we talk about where we've gone and how, how, how much farther we have to go, I've got to say, in the Senate, uh, we're not at that 20-something percent. We are at about 18 percent when Rhonda Fox Graves in 1934 walked into the Senate chamber, she was the very first woman. 
And so when you consider here we are in 2016 and we are about 18%, I don't know about that 100 year mark. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have, to, uh, we have to, to work a little harder and work a little faster because we know what women bring when they come in. We know that they bring the, uh, a consciousness that not only is about helping women, but by extension really helps families, helps the community, and helps the society. So when we put our priorities down, whether it's talking about, about again, raising the minimum wage, paid family leave, when we talk about child care, and, you know, educational affordability, women's rights, women's, women's health options, these are things that impact the entire family and again the entire community. So we have work to do. I am certainly standing here not as just the first Democratic leader, but I am the first woman leader in the history of the state of New York. Okay. And I say that because it's, it's important to know you know, when you look at the percentages of women that are in New York State, and we are over 50%, and we're talking about this particular first, it really is startling. But it happened because, in addition to wonderful women colleagues, there are enlightened men. And I believe the enlightened men, as well as these women who are in the forefront, will continue to move New York forward, and I'm certainly happy to be part of that progress. Now, part of what happens here in the legislature is that women get together, and we get together to talk about uh, things that we feel we can direct legislatively, and in order to do that, you've got to have a woman who is willing to put all of us together, assembly, senate, this and that, through all of the, 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 the uh, hectic times here to make sure that we focus on women's agenda and we have a very capable leader in the nurse, next woman you will meet, which is Assemblywoman Donna LaParta. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. It's indeed a pleasure uh, to serve with you and to serve with the governor who has shown a real deep commitment to, to women's issues. Uh, Nancy got me thinking, when I was first elected to the State Assembly, uh, no one in my area really knew how to say the word Assemblywoman. <laughs> they still get a little stuck in their throat with that occasionally. But to be the first assemblywoman, and I got that question as well, do I get tired of hearing it? I don't. I don't because it's, I'm very proud to be the first woman. But in the year 2016, to think that we are still having this conversation, that you're the first leader, we haven't broken that glass ceiling in the assembly yet, I must tell you. And most of us are keenly aware of it and look forward to that day where we have a woman at, the, at, at that level of leadership in the, in the state assembly. It's true, I am the elected chair of the... Uh, uh, Legislative Women's Caucus. I'm joined by our vice chairs, Ms. Dupree and Ms. Barrett, who are with us. Also, Ms. Cook and Senator Davisti are Savisky are our other officers. Uh, we are a group that joins together 54, a mere 25% of the state legislature. We are determined to find common ground between us on issues that we can use to support one another, but also to advance the cause of women and children and families in this state. And this year we have uh, decided to focus on after school programming, on the importance of child care, but also on the importance of the commission that will be celebrating women's suffrage. And we want to thank Assemblywoman Gunther, who's here, and Senator Little, for passing the bill to allow us to, to create this commission. And we want to give them a round of applause for their hard work. We are, we are very, very happy to learn that uh, the Lieutenant Governor will, will be on that commission. We're also joined by other colleagues. I know that our uh, Captain colleague, Nolan. Kathy Nolan, is here as well. So it, it is a, it's a real pleasure for me to be a part of this group. What you can expect from the caucus relative to Women's History Month next week in both chambers, we'll be passing our own resolution on International Women's Day down in the uh, Legislative Office Building. Uh, right before you get out to the concourse will be a display on the women's history of the legislature featuring a number of firsts. And I will be very proud to serve alongside of all of you in the coming months and years as we advance the cause of women in, in the state of this great state of New York. And it's now my pleasure to introduce Mayor City of Albany, Mayor Kathy Sheehan. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, where do these amazing women come from? Oftentimes they start out in local government. And 
the Lieutenant Governor is a role model for those of us in elected office um, and an inspiration for us to continue to recruit women to run for local offices because she started in municipal government and she's now our Lieutenant Governor. And many of the stories of the elected state legislators that we see here today started in getting involved in local government. And so one of the things that I do and that my fellow women mayors do, you know, it's uh, hard to believe it wasn't until 2009 that the first woman was elected to run one of the big five cities outside of New York City and now three of the five of us are women so I think we're ahead on that but we got to keep the momentum going um, but you know when you look at the, um, the what women do in local government and the voice that we bring it's just so important that we continue to look at recruiting from women who are leaders in PTAs and Girl Scouts and taking on leadership positions and not-for-profits in their communities those are women that we need to be um, encouraging to run and encouraging to get involved because they are the leaders of the future. I couldn't agree more with the Chancellor that we need to accelerate women not only in government and in leadership positions in elected office but on boards and in leadership positions because it matters. We are fighting for issues that impact our families. As a mayor the $15 an hour minimum wage has a significant impact in a city where one in four of our residents lives at or below the poverty level. We're talking about bringing families out of poverty bringing vibrancy back to neighborhoods, allowing families to be able to provide and plan for their future. So it's critically important. And the reason that I think you see the women leaders stepping up is because they spent time in local government, in their communities, and they really understand the impact that it would have. So I'm indebted and grateful to all of them. They serve as role models to me and to women electeds across the state, particularly our Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul. Really, you are that wonderful role model of how you can take that action at the local level, caring about your community, and bring it up to the state level. And we're so fortunate to have you as a voice for all of us. Thank you. After hearing our speakers today, I think you come away with that sense that what drives these women to their positions, whether it's in education or elected office, is truly a passion that is all about making other people's lives better. And at the core of what drove all of us to public service, it's about changing our communities to leave this place a better place than we found it. And that's why we can find common ground where others perhaps can't across the aisle, uh, working in a bipartisan way. And uh, as one of the few members of Congress, for first from my district who was a woman, but spent some time in Washington, uh, it is so refreshing to see what people can accomplish here in our state capital, where we don't talk about gridlock, we talk about getting work done. And it's, a lot of it's because of the people who are in leadership positions who know it's all, not about egos, it's about accomplishments and moving this state forward. So I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to serve at the side of our governor. And I think all of you hearing these individuals should be extremely proud of the leadership that's represented here today. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions. Um, I think most of them is Ricardo and Ms. Stewart Cousins. You know, it's still three men in a room, or maybe four men in a room. Can you talk to me about if there were a woman in the room, um, oh, through I think it would change things just because, you know, the reality is, and that's why uh, the conversation began and so many people really resonated with that, is again, women make up over 50% of New York State's population. And the reality is, is that we actually uh, do get issues brought to our attention that aren't necessarily brought to the attention of our male counterparts. So there is another perspective many times. Very often we are in agreement, but there are also other perspectives, other ways to look at things. So I think that any time we can include, uh, you know, certainly a, a, a wide variety of voices, we get a better end product. Yeah, I, what I'd like to add to that is I think women bring an important difference to, to the mix. Uh, I have found in my experience that we are much more focused on an outcome, on actually trying to get something done, as opposed to finding out who's going to take credit for it. We're very, very focused on getting the job done. And I think many of us get very impatient when we're split between hairs and trying to argue uh, among a variety of, of, of uh, tedious interests. And I'm, I'm very proud of the work that we do. We like to roll up our sleeves, get down to business, get stuff done. And that's not doesn't apply to all of our male colleagues, but I think uh, the women behind me know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right. Anything else? 
Well, thank you for joining us today, and uh, make sure you stop by the second floor and see the new display of uh, celebrating uh, women from the legal profession. All right.